Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to have the last lesson in our graphing calculator appendix, parametric and polar graphs. If you want to graph either a parametric or a polar graph, the first step is to change the graph type your calculator is currently using. This option is often in the general settings on your calculator, but it will vary from calculator to calculator. Once you find where your calculator has this option, change it to whatever type you want to work with. We'll look at working with parametric first, then we'll look at polar. And notice that you still have to set up your viewing window when you're working with parametric and polar graphs. You need to choose the appropriate x min, x max, y min, and y max to view your graph. You need to have that horizontal and vertical location so you have a viewing window to look through. Or if you don't want to use x min, x max, y min, y max, setting it by hand, you can also just move it to the appropriate place using zoom. Start your graph and then use the zoom function to back it out and then put it into whatever place you want to look at it. However you want to do it, you just still have to deal with the viewing window just like you did with a normal function graph. All right, setting up a parametric graph is very similar to setting up a normal function graph. Instead of setting up a single function though, we'll be setting up two functions, a horizontal function x of t and a vertical function y of t. So you set each of those up just like you used to set up one function, but now you're setting up how your horizontal part moves and how your vertical part moves. The only major difference is that we have to tell the graphing calculator what interval the parameter should use. It will often default to t going from 0 to 2 pi, and on some calculators it might default to t going from negative 10 to 10, but for some graphs that won't be enough. You'll have to think about the specific one you're using. If it looks like it's cut off all of a sudden, you might want to just expand your interval to check and see if that fixes things, if that changes the graph you're looking at, or if you think about it a lot beforehand, you might be able to go, oh, I see what kind of interval will fit my viewing window well. So something to think about is that your the interval that you choose for your parameter will affect it, and the default one isn't necessarily always going to work. For example, if we graphed x of t equals t plus 1 and y of t equals quantity t minus 1 squared minus 5, with the default interval of t going from 0 to 2 pi, we'd obtain this graph here. Ugh. It's missing a big chunk of the graph because of that default interval, right? We can see that it should also have a portion going this way, but it's just completely missing that because our default interval stops, right? It doesn't even go under zero. So because of that, we've just cut off this large chunk. So that default interval can really cause some problems. So if we want to be able to see the whole thing, we need to change our interval. To fix the missing portion, we increase the size of our intervals to obtain this new graph. So if we switch to t going from negative 10 to 10, it would now goes actually past the edges of our viewing window, and we've completely filled what our viewing window can see of this graph. So that's much better. But I want you to notice, the graph here isn't quite smooth. We sort of see these jaggy corner edges in parts, right? That's because we're using a large t-step. T-step is a specific value that says the step size between points it uses for graphing. The way it graphing calculator graphs things is basically the way we graph things. It evaluates multiple points and then it draws a curve between those points. But because we're evaluating multiple points and then it's drawing a curve, if there's a lot of space between these steps in those points, it will wind up getting these jaggy edges where it doesn't quite know how to make the appropriate curve. So if you want to be able to get a nice smooth curve, you need to use a smaller t-step value. You lower the size of the step between the points and it will make a nice smoother curve, just like when we're graphing ourselves. If we want to get a better sense for how the graph is going to work out, we we want to have less space between the points that we put down. So we do the same thing for our graph. We use a smaller value like t-step equals 0.05, and now our graph looks nice and smooth, right? The graph smooths out because there's now enough points on the graphing calculator for it to be able to make a smooth curve for us to see. Graphing in polar is very similar. We enter some function r of theta in terms of our new independent variable theta. Just like parametric, we have to pay attention to the interval our theta is given. The interval will normally standardly go to t going from 0 to 2 pi, but often that's not going to be enough for some of the functions we'll be working with. And occasionally we'll want to deal with the theta step value as well if we want to smooth it out. It might wind up being jaggy for certain initial theta step values, so we might want to make it smaller to smooth things out. For example, if we had this one right here graphing r of theta equals theta with the default interval of t going from 0 to 2 pi, we'd obtain this graph here. But this graph is completely missing lots of information. We might be able to realize that it actually could keep going that way if our t was allowed to go to a larger thing. Oh, t, it should actually be theta in this case for the specific thing we're using here uh, since I set r theta here. However, with some graphing calculators, it will actually wind up using t for polar as well. Depends on the specific calculator you've got. Most calculators, though, will use 
use theta for this. So in this case, we have our default interval of theta going from 0 to 2 pi, and we realize uh, there's stuff missing here, right? If we were able to go to lower theta values, we'd be able to get different stuff. If we had higher theta values, we'd have other places to graph. So we have to expand our interval. We expand our interval, and once again, that should be a theta. And we get this graph here. And so we have a much better idea of what the thing looks like. We see, though, it doesn't look quite as smooth as we want. So the issue there is our theta step. So we can go back and choose a small theta step. So we can smooth it out by putting a theta step of 0.05. And now it's smoothed out. One thing to notice, though, our theta of going from negative 10 to 10, we see in this viewing window, we're actually still not completely using everything that can go into this viewing window. If we were to increase our interval, to smaller to a lower starting value and a higher starting value, we'd actually wind up continuing this out. So we're only seeing a portion of the graph. This will continue to spiral out forever and ever. And so we might want to increase our theta even larger so we can completely fill the viewing window. Depends on the specific situation, but it's definitely something to think about. So when you're dealing with parametric and polar graphs, it's very, very similar to graphing a normal function. But now you have to pay attention to what the interval is that you're graphing. With a normal function, it graphs the entire x interval, right? That's pretty easy, so you know that you've got all the things that you could be interested in since it's all the x values. But with t and r, sorry, with t and theta, it's something where it's not quite directly what we're looking at the viewing window. So we have to set this arbitrary interval. So with t, you really have to think about what will be the great, what will be useful stuff here, and same with theta, what will be useful stuff here. With lots of polar things, it will wind up repeating, so 0 to 2 pi will be enough, but sometimes you need larger things before it winds up repeating, and sometimes it won't repeat at all, at which point you want to just keep expanding your interval until you've filled out your viewing window. So think about the interval, and occasionally if it's kind of rough around the edges, just lower your theta step or your t step value so that it smooths out and you get a nice smooth curve. All right, that finishes it for graphing calculators. We'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.